Hello friends, welcome to the Viva Voice of Anatomy. Today we discuss the spleen. So we start with the introduction of spleen. The spleen is a lymphatic organ which is connected to the blood circulatory system. Its main function is is a filtration of a blood. It filters and removes the old and uh, fragile RBC from the circulation. Now we first see the location of the spleen where it is located in the abdomen. To locate the each and every organ in the abdomen, we divide the abdominal cavity in the nine quadrant, right? Out of this nine quadrant, the spleen is located in the mainly in the left hypochondrium or a left hypochondriac region and partly it is extended into the epigastric region. That is the location in the body. Now we discuss its position. How it is positioned in the body? The spleen is directed downward, forward and laterally and it is reaching to the mid axillary line. Now it is directed or placed obliquely with the long axis of a 10th rib, right? So this is uh, a position of the spleen. Now in this position, it is a waged or a compressed between the two structure that is the fundus of the stomach anteriorly and the diaphragm posteriorly. Now we see its dimension. Uh, to uh, remember its dimension and weight, you can remember the odd number 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9 to 11. So first the 1, 1 inch for its thickness, it is 1 inch thicker. Second is a 3, it is a 3 inch broader. Third is a 5, it is 5 inch in the length, right? The next seven number, seven is for a weight, it is seven ounce in the weight and nine to eleven, it is related to the ninth, tenth and eleventh rib. So it is its dimension. Now we discuss the main part of the spleen that is uh, important uh, for the viva point of view and also to remember the, uh, to keep the spleen in the proper anatomical position that is its external features. So now the external feature, remember it is having the first, it is having a two ends, anterior, posterior, it is having a three border, the superior border, the inferior border and intermediate border. Third thing, it is having a two surface, visceral surface, diaphragmatic surface. It is having fourth thing, two angles, anterobasal angle, posterobasal angle. And the last, it is having one hilum. We discuss one by one. The first thing, it is having a two ends. These are anterior end and the posterior end. The anterior end is more like a border rather than the end. See, it is like a border. It is expanded. And the anterior end is directed downward, forward and laterally. So, it is also known as a lateral end. And it is reaching up to mid axillary line. So, this is the border like end is an anterior end, right? Opposite to it is a posterior end. See, this is the rounded part that is a posterior end which is directed opposite to the anterior end, upward, backward and the medially, upward, backward and the medially that is a posterior end. This is the first thing. Second thing, borders. It is having a three border. First, the superior border like superiorly, it is a sharp. Superior border is having a characteristic nodes, sometimes one, sometimes two. This nodes is present on the superior border, but it is not constant. Second is the inferior border. This is the superior border. Now the inferior border. Inferior border is around it. See, this is the inferior border. Okay. This is the inferior border. It is around it. Third is the intermediate border. Intermediate border lies on the right side or you can say on the inner side of the spleen between the superior and the inferior border. So this is intermediate border. See this rounded is an intermediate border. Superior border once again having a notch near the anterior end. Inferior border which is a rounded. Intermediate border it is also rounded. Now the third thing. It is having a two surface. One is a diaphragmatic surface that is smooth and convex. 
and the second is a visceral surface that is concave and the irregular. This concave and the irregular is a visceral surface. Now the fourth thing, it is having a two angle, anterobasal angle, posterobasal angle. Anterobasal angle is an angle between the superior border and anterior end. We have seen the anterior end is like a border. So between these two is an anterobasal angle. This angle is the first most part of the spleen uh, when the spleen uh, is palpable when the spleen is enlarged. So this is also known as a clinical angle of the spleen. Second angle is a posterior basal. See this, this one. The posterior basal angle rounded is between the inferior border and the anterior end is a posterior basal angle, right? So this is the angles. The last part is hilum. You can see here some structures, vessels. This is the hilum. And the splenic vessels and the nerves is passed through this hilum. So this is the hilum of a spleen. So these are the external feature of the spleen. You have to remember this feature to keep the spleen in the anatomical position. But before that, we see its relation. See the abdominal organ is related to the peritoneum as well as other visceras. So it is having a peritoneal relations and a visceral relation. First we see the peritoneal relation of the spleen. Peritoneum produce some folds which is directly attached to the spleen. We can, we can call them as a ligament. The so such first fold of the peritoneum is a gastrosplenic ligament, gastrosplenic ligament that is extended or attached to the hilum of the spleen to the greater curvature of the stomach, okay, gastrosplenic ligament. Now you have to remember the content of the gastrosplenic ligament. It contains the so, uh, short gastric vessels short gastric vessels and associated lymphatic and sympathetic nerve. This is the important viva question as well as short question. The second ligament is a lino-renal ligament. Lino-renal, lean means the latin word of the spleen, renal means kidney. Lino-renal ligament extend again from the hilum of the spleen to the anterior surface of the left kidney. The important content of this ligament are the tail of pancreas, over here, the splenic vessels, the pancreaticosplenic splenic group of lymph node and associated lymphatic and the sympathetic nerve. The second ligament, lino-renal ligament. Third ligament is not actual the ligament of the spleen. It is not attached to the spleen. Only it support the anterior end of the spleen like this. That is phrenico-colic. Phrenico means diaphragm and colic large colon. So it is extend from the diaphragm above to the splenic flexure of the colon below. This is the colicophrenic ligament. So these three ligament shows the peritoneal relation of the spleen. Now comes to the visceral relation. The visceral surface, see this is the inner surface. Visceral surface is related to the certain viscera and this viscera make an impression. The first such impression is a gastric impression. The gastric impression is for the fundus of the stomach that is between the superior border and the intermediate border. Remember, this is the most important impression to determine the, uh, to keep the spleen in the anatomical po position. It is the largest and the most concave impression of the spleen, the gastric impression for the fundus of the stomach. The second impression is a renal impression that is also concave that is present between the intermediate border and the inferior border. This is a renal impression for the anterior surface of a left kidney. Third is a triangular impression near the anterior end here this is the anterior end triangular impression that is a colic impression for the splenic flexure of a colon for the splenic flexure of the colon. The last is a pancreatic impression that is between the colic impression and the hilum pancreatic impression for the tail of the pancreas. Last, this is the hilum which provides the attachment of 
gastrosplenic ligament and lino-renal ligament. So, this is the visceral relation. Last is the diaphragmatic relation. See, the diaphragmatic surface is a large and the convex that is related to the left dome of diaphragm. Now, we discuss the anatomical position of a spleen. The spleen first, you have to keep the spleen in the left hand because spleen lies in the left hypochondria. Second, you have to keep the spleen obliquely directed downward forward and the literally in such a way that it makes an angle of 45 degree with the horizontal okay keeping the gastric impression the large and concave impression that is a gastric impression we have seen in the visceral surface the gastric impression superiorly okay superiorly gastric impression superiorly so when you keep the gastric impression superiorly automatically the anterior end faces anteriorly, posterior and faces posterior. So, this is the anatomical position of the spleen. Now, discuss the, its blood supply. Spleen is supplied by the splenic artery, which is a largest branch of a celiac trunk. Now, it passes from the celiac trunk behind the pancreas to the hilum of the spleen and it, its course, it is tortuous. The tortuosity provides the movement of a spleen during the respiration. Venous drainage, it is drained by the splenic vein, which passes behind the pancreas, unite behind the neck of the pancreas with the splay, a superior mesenteric vein and this will form the portal. Now, last, it is applied anatomy. First, the palpation of the spleen. See, the normally, you cannot palpate the spleen until it enlarges to its double size and it is palpated below the left coastal margin. Second thing, enlargement of the spleen is known as a splenomegaly. You can see the splenomegaly in certain diseases like a malaria, leukemias, etc. Third thing, in certain diseases we have to remove the spleen which is known as a splenectomy. Now, what care should be taken during the splenectomy? The care should be taken to not to injure the tail of the pancreas because this tail of the pancreas is in reach with the eyelid of a Langerhans and also you have to keep the two pedicle gastrosplenic and the lino-renal uh, ligament be safe because it contain the vessels okay splenectomy next fourth splenic puncture splenic puncture is done with the lumbar puncture needle it to be done to diagnose certain diseases. For splenic puncture, the lumbar puncture needle is introduced through the left mid axillary line in the space between the ninth and the tenth rib. Splenic puncture. Now, the splenic infarct. We have seen the blood supply, it is supplied by the splenic artery. Splenic artery divides in the spleen, form the pedicles, and the smallest branch of the splenic artery is and artery. It will not anastomose with its neighboring branch. So, when this splenic artery, the branch of the smallest branch of the splenic artery is a block, that part of the spleen undergo necrosis. That is known as a splenic infarct. And the splenic infarct will produce the pain which is referred to the left uh, shoulder region. This is known as a Kehor's sign, right? Spleen is also a common uh, organ to be ruptured during the uh, road traffic accident when there is an injury to the left upper abdominal area, splenic rupture. So, this is about the spleen. Thank you. If you like our video, click on the like button and share with your friends. To get the regular updates on anatomy video by Viva Voice of Anatomy, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon.